where the uh, Moses would go to pray uh, while they were in the wilderness and they would take all the problems of the Israelites to God. And here we also have uh, we also have uh, God sightings, as you can see. Uh, this is uh, the maps, the, the God sighting map. And a God sighting is where you have seen God in your life. So we take a footprint and then we write on the footprint where you have seen God. And we would uh, write something there and we would stick them all the way and follow them up and see how uh, the journey of the Israelites faith grew as they went through the wilderness. So this is the God sighting charts we had. The, the parents just did it today. We had the tribe of Joseph. They had, I think they had the longest train because there were so many. Then we have the tribe of Asher. We had the tribe of Dan. The tribe of Issachar. The tribe of Judah. The tribe of Gad. And this was our time. We had a wonderful uh, time here with the children learning about prayer and how to pray. One of the, the days that stood out for them was on Wednesday when we were talking about intercessory prayer. We talked about how we can intercede for others, especially those who do not know Jesus and those who have not yet received salvation. But when we pray on their behalf, God acts in their stead and works in their situation and God brings victory in their life. Thank you very much for joining us in the Wilderness Escape where God guides and provides. Welcome to Moses' tent. Could we stand this side over here? <laughs> our great God heard our cry while we are in Egypt and he was so determined to rescue us from the labor and the hardship we underwent in Egypt. So the Lord told me to call the tribe of Dan together. You with your animals and with your young ones. Ah, you've not come with animals today. And God told me to give you some instructions that we slaughter. We slaughter a which animal? Yeah. Which is very pure, isn't it? Yes. And then what do we do with the blood? We yeah. stick it on So to our parents, this time when you are attending another station prayer, we will slaughter an animal. Yeah. And if you slaughter an animal, blood will come out. And so we have the blood here of the animals. And the instruction was very clear <laughs> that it is a lesson of obedience that you paint the doorpost so that tonight, midnight, when the angel of death will pass over, any door that will be having a red paint, what will happen to the firstborn inside there? Will survive. The firstborn son will be spared and even of your animals will be spared. But if you just leave your door like this, plain like this, what will happen to the first one? They will die! Right. So parents, I'm not asking you to paint, I'm asking you to do what you would have done if you are in Egypt that time when I talk to you. While you are away, we roasted the, the, the lamp. So please follow me into the room with your clothes on, with your backpack, with everything, with your stuff, so that when we, the angel passes and we are signaled to go from Egypt, we are ready to march. So let us go into the room there where we're going to eat unleavened bread, then we march out of Egypt. Sometimes it's hard to see what's coming next. Oh, so, food is right here. 
right here. Yes, 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 yes. We pick the unleavened bread after painting the door post. We are picking unleavened bread. Continue, so continue. the recreation of the Passover feast and the night where the Israelites had to eat the feast of the unleavened bread which you've just eaten and uh, paint their doorposts which you've just painted. I want someone to tell me, did God know where the Israelites lived? Yes. yes. Then why did he ask them to paint their doorposts? Yes, Meli. Uh, to check, to check if they are To check if they are obedient. Well done. Thank you for remembering. Yes, so it was not, um, it's not that God did know where the Israelites were parents, it's that he wanted us to be very obedient, including the feast of the Passover. They had very specific instructions about the type of bread, how to roast the meat, the type of herbs and all that, but how it applies to us is we have to obey God in everything that we do. So every day they would come here, we had a Bible point, a Bible verse, um, and lesson for the day that we put all around the, the tent. Now, unfortunately, after no, fortunately after they ate the Passover, Pharaoh said, it is enough, I've had it, you people let, let, need to go. You need to go and uh, worship the God that you want to worship. So please, can you get now out? We go. <laughs> Ago. We don't know where Moses has gone to. I don't know if he has gone back to Egypt. We don't even know. We are so confused. I, I feel like he has gone to Egypt, right? He has abandoned us. And that's why I'm not trusting this God. Should we worship this metal over here? No! Yes, we should. Oh, no, we should. Moses? Moses is in the Nola Mountain. Where can you see him? Almost worshiping this, this is a cult. And one of the commandments of the rules said we should not do that. So I got hungry and dropped the commandment down and actually broke all of them. Now to our parents, that's the synopsis of what we've been doing at Moses 10. It ends with the giving or receiving of the Ten Commandments by Moses from at Mount Sinai. the 
marketplace where we are trekking back in time with the Israelites um, in our journey through the wilderness. Okay, uh, this is the wilderness escape, and uh, we have made um, some tambourines there. We were making tambourines as we sang with Miriam after they crossed the Red Sea, and then we made some sandals to remember that. God gives us what we need because the sandals of the Israelites did not wear out for 40 years when they were in the wilderness. And then we made some rope to remind us that God gives us the strength that we need. The same way that Moses, when he raised up his hand when the Israelites were fighting with the Amalekites, he was able to prevail when he got tired, Aaron and Hur held up his hands to give him strength. And then we, we weaved with Benjamin to remember the story of the Passover. They were told to pack everything because God was going to save them. So we made some mats and then finally uh, Abigail sand art tent. You've just seen what we made. We made the um, sand art because God wants to inscribe his commandments in our hearts. One of the games that we did was balloon busting. That is what we are going to do with them right now so that you also see what they are doing. I'm going to ask you parents to join them in the line. They will be so interested in seeing you also participating with them. When you're a crocodile, you'll be eaten. <laughs> Sorry, you'll eat. If you are not a crocodile, you'll be eaten. Yes. Amen. Amen. When God has yourself, yes, ma'am. The devil is a crocodile. <laughs> I just I love my family. Just love my family. One thing I love myself about myself is uh, who, who who am I in Christ? There was one one time in my life I found myself battling between life and death. I found myself being wheeled to a theater to have my arm amputated. But here yeah, I live today because of God. Amen. Let's all serve God. Amen.
lessons we've learned about prayer. I pray, oh Father, that the lessons they have learned, they will take a, 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 a root in their young hearts and that they will implement them at home. Help them even as they go home to unwind and remember all these lessons. Lord, may your Holy Spirit continue teaching them even as they continue to grow in their journey of faith. We pray that you will continue to be with us. May you, Lord, give them favor in their families as they continue to pray and share this message, message with their friends. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Shalom, shalom, till we meet again, till we meet again, shalom. 